Hey there, I'm Kit, I'm literate, and it feels like February should be over, but it's technically not. Now, do I know this video isn't going to come up or, you know, get uploaded? You're not going to watch this until at least March 17th. But for me, it's still February. It's February 23rd right now. I'm just really behind on like uploading videos. Um, I mean, they're done. It's just, I'm posting them only on Wednesdays and let's not start this vlog off with a ramble. What are we gonna start this vlog off with instead? So I went to my friend's birthday party recently, um, just came back yesterday from it. It was only like two days, but I went and visited my dad um, before that cause they're around the same area. Birthday party shenanigans, you know, my friends, I mean, me too, but my friends are um, all cosplayers. I don't know if you've ever seen my wig wall in the background of these videos. I have a wig wall. I have these bunnies. Like, that's gotta say something there. But um, they asked, my friend who had the birthday asked me specifically if I would cosplay a character that I don't know. And so I said, sure, because I like my friends and I want them to live their best lives, you know? Um, I was like, just so long as you let me borrow a wig for it and tell me what to do, which was, she wanted me to cosplay uh, a character that like she cosplays. It's just she couldn't cosplay two characters at the same time. And I was like, yeah, sure. Just like, give me your wig, tell me what to wear and I'll be there. So it was weird because, like I said, I didn't know my character and um, it was specifically like a Harry Potter um, Marauders video that they were planning on doing and I've, I've made this joke before. Um, I read half of the book, The Half-Blood Prince, so I like to say that I read A Quarter Blood Prince and I watched specifically the second movie. Can't remember what the second one is called, but I remember watching that because all the time I go, I watch the movie with the flying cars and my friends go, the second. So I know a bit just from it being like a popular fandom, but I don't know a lot about the series. It was weird. So my friends got me to dress up as Remus and I had no idea what I was doing for two days. We did this um, one night and then like the next day in its entirety and it was just basically me following them around everywhere um, dressed as a character I don't know doing whatever they tell me to do. I'm actually really excited to see how it turns out. I'm especially excited for the bloopers because um, I was very out of character and I'm ready for uh, the multiple different times that I just started chanting WAP lyrics just over and over again. I saw a duck and just went certified duck. <laughs> You know, different things like that. I don't know why, it was just stuck in my head. I think when that video comes out though, I'll like be sharing it on my social medias and stuff just to be like, hey, look at what video I was in. Um, and you guys can see, I'm sure like people who watch my videos are more well-versed in Harry Potter than I am. So um, I think it'd be interesting for you guys to see. Uh, but like full disclosure, I had no idea what I was doing. I just put on an outfit, put on some foundation. I got um, scars put on my face and I walked through fields um, and fenced. Like really, that scene was really weird. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> if we want to talk about bookish related things though, so while I was at my dad's uh, with nothing to do besides like hang out with him and why would I do that? I read the entirety of a local 
Try to get your finger out of the way. A local habitat. Habitation? Wow. Local Habitation um, by John McGuire. This is the second book in the October Day series, uh, which is basically like a, from what I'm getting so far, a murder mystery, sort of detective, um, supernatural. I already said the word mystery, but I'm going to say it again here. Mystery series has to do a lot with the Fae and stuff. Our main character's name is October Day. Crazy thought there. She's the knight for uh, one of the kings of the Fae. And uh, she just like goes on missions sometimes and figures out, you know, whatever he wants her to figure out. This book in particular, um, he wants her to go and find his niece, uh, who hasn't been calling him recently, and he's like, what the hell, can you, like, go check on her? Basically, like, a welfare check. And so she goes, uh, Toby, October, goes, um, searches for this niece whose name is January. I do not know the significance of the month names yet and why they're named this way, but okay. And when she finds January, there's like something weird going on, but she's not really sure what it is. She just gets this weird feeling, um, and so she's asking like, hey, yeah, what's been happening recently? And January's like, well, uh, we've had a few people die recently, so now all of a sudden it's a murder mystery who is killing the, uh, people who are like under the employment of January and like what is going on here. I actually really enjoyed this book a lot more than I did the first one. Um, I believe the first one was a three star. This one was like a four, 4.5 star sort of thing. I don't know, just something about this book, this particular plot and um, I think the murderer was a character that you could really like sympathize with, which I think gave it a lot of points. I thought it was good. I am currently reading An Artificial Night. This is the third book in the series. I can't tell you what happens in it yet. I've maybe read seven pages. I've read two pages. I'm on page two really have not started this one yet. Can't say what it's about, but that's what I'm currently reading. I am currently listening to the third book in all for the game, which I cannot remember the title of. There's the Foxhole Court. There's the Raven, the King's Men. That's what it was. Um, I'm currently listening to The King's Men. It is the third book in the All for the Game trilogy. I'm not really sure what I should say about it because it is the third book in the series. It's not like this series where, um, each book kind of has its own plot. This one is just, like, continuing the All for the Game plot. I guess I can summarize All for the Game really quick. Um, or The Foxhole Court, the first book in the series. Um, so basically, our main character's name is Neil. He is running away from his father, um, it, but he really loves the sport XE, which is a made-up sport. Um, it's basically hockey mixed with lacrosse, I think is the like official definition of it. He really loves the sport, and so he joins a college XE team made up entirely of people who don't really come from good backgrounds. They're on their second, third chance, whatever. Um, the coach is really adamant about the fact that um, these people should be getting another chance in life. And there's just a lot of issues. It has to do with the Japanese mafia a lot. 
Um, I'm, I know I'm currently in the middle of like a torture scene, so that's fun. Yeah, despite the fact there are some sports scenes, but it's like mostly sort of slice of life and then also like the whole mafia plot and torture and all that. I'm really enjoying it though. I really like it. I was kind of scared because uh, going into the series, I heard a lot that it has a bunch of trigger warnings. So I was kind of nervous about that, what exactly it was going to bring me, but I, it hasn't personally bothered me. I know how to tell fiction from reality. That feels bad to say, but like, have you seen what people have been doing recently online being like, oh, you can't uh, support this book because it talks about rape. Like just the th thought of talking about that, a bad subject in general, um, means that you can't read the entire book or anything. I don't know, but it's it's going well. I think I'm enjoying it. Um, let me check how much room is on my camera before I do this next thing because this recording is already at 15, almost 16 minutes. And I didn't take off the videos from the last vlog before I did this, so one second. Okay, we're back. I got some mail, and I know it's not bookish, but I wanted to include it in this vlog anyway. Um, one, because my friends opened up an art store for their art, and I want to support them. Um, two, because, like, we're all nerds here, right? We read books. Um, you probably also are fans of other things. Like, generally, you just have that circle of nerddom. Um, so I thought maybe it might be interesting to other people. I don't know. Um, free marketing for my friends, though. So, first of all, package. I have heard that things are individually wrapped in here. Would say, though, some good tape on this, or, you know, good glue. Wow. Oh my god. We're gonna get the letter opener. Ugh. It's boring, but it will do. It, like, it just says that. I don't even know what that means. I just, I was like, I need, I should get a letter opener because I suck. Uh, and my mom was like, gotcha. That was so much easier. Oh my gosh. And of course, I keep my letter opener at the foot of my bed, as it should be. Oh, this has bubbles in it. Good packaging. Good packaging. So, this is actually kind of pretty. Not that the um thing so first first thing that i see is this which is nice um i enjoy the ribbon hopefully they do this for like other people too and not just me uh because i'm special and i'm their friend i like that it has these little stickers of their like profile pic sort of thing so the first thing that i got that I think will be um, a little bit more of a fan thing is I got this fan art thing of, um, it's officially on the website as the gang with, you know, two A's, but you know, the Avatar The Last Airbender characters. Just like, I don't know, I like their outfits. I also like haven't said what their store is called. Um, so I guess I'll link it in the description. Their store is called Umi Maho. So I don't know if you're a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, the gang in nice modern outfits. Ooh. The other stuff probably isn't as exciting um, because it's not fandom stuff. 
this, by the way, like. Pretty. Ooh. <laughs> two different artists, two business cards. Um, so this one is with their little avatar faces. They don't look like this in real life, just in case you're wondering. This one has the um, site name, the address, email, and then their um, Instagrams. They have the site Instagram and then their two uh, personal Instagrams. I don't even think you'll be able to see it. And then this one is specifically just for one of them. Interesting. I get a Maho, but I don't get an Umi. Where's Umi? So this one's specifically for um, this artist. I'm trying not to be shaky, but like basically just like the, like I said, the shop Instagram, the shop website, and then her personal Instagram. That's kind of nice because then, um, like if you didn't know them as well as I do, you can then tell by like business cards who has which art style and who is which like Instagram so you can see more of that specific person's art. Um, but there's not one for my other friend, it's just this one. Anyway, um, so my friend made Zodiac. Um, original characters for every zodiac and um so i bought a sticker set can i name them by face alone no i know this one is aries take your time camera i always make fun of his tongue um i always say the like country boy i love you meme when i'm talking about this character we just really don't want to focus. What if I do that, like, basic? Why does that work? I'm not a horoscope person. So I'll just show each one. Focus? Focus? I have notes on my phone, but me remembering them? No. That's fake. Oh, please. I like him. Yes. I tried my best. I don't know why I tried to describe these characters, because... I don't even remember their names most of the time. This one's Cancer. I clearly have favorites, but I like his pink glasses. Anyway, she has like lore about these characters. Um, I have the notes of them on my phone. I'm just stupid and I haven't memorized them. I don't know if she's ever going to talk about the lore, but I was like, hell yeah, I want all of them as a sticker. So I got them as a sticker. This next one might be of interest to some other people. Um, a set, I got the full set, but you can get like individuals if you want. You can also get individuals of the Zodiac boys. I just wanted the whole set. A set of postcards for a whole bunch of cryptids. So we're just gonna go like this, I guess, and do it. Um, this one, they say what they are on the back, that's why I'm like, um, this one is Thunderbird from Illinois. And then on the back they have, um, like the actual postcard setup, and then like a little quote from each cryptid. So like that one says, need a lift. We have skinwalkers. Do I remember where they're from? No. Arizona. 
This one says, be mindful of the night and safe travels. That's nice. I'm glad skinwalkers are helpful. This one is just an alien from Nevada. You know how it is. I think it's really cute though. I really like the chibi art style for it. Uh, this one says, time for a space adventure. This one is Chupacabra from Texas. Oh, this one's cute. Chupacabra, in case you're wondering, is enjoying the farm life. You go, Chupacabra. This one is uh, Goat Man. I'm trying to remember without looking at Maryland. Yeah, Goat Man, Maryland. This one says, stay off my bridge. I'll accept bribes, though. Um, I'm also going to have to tell my friend that she misspelled accept. <laughs> uh, he will also ask pet bribes, though, so that's good. This one is the Kraken from the coast of Norway. This one says, travel the seven seas with me, which is cute. Um, not sure. I think, I think it's a little too hard of a hover, you know, too tight. I'm not sure that that would be, um, comfortable, but thank you for the invitation. <laughs> this one's cute. This one is the Jersey Devil from New Jersey. Would you believe that? Um, I'll let you like pay, take a couple seconds with the art. This one says fun sized evil, which is cute. And then this one is at the Jersey Devil. So not only um, is, is it fun sized, but it has social media. This one I really like. I think it's my favorite of the bunch. This one is the Loch Ness Monster from Scottish Highlands. Uh, this one says, come take a load off and relax. From Nessie. Uh, and then this one is Bigfoot from Washington. Uh, this one says, enjoy the wonders of the forest, but try not to, s yes, but try not to scare off the natives. I can't read. He has a little, he has a little marshmallow. This one is, of course, Mothman. Do I know where Mothman is from? No. West Virginia. Uh, and this one says, follow the light inside. Mothman. I've had the uh, YMCA version where instead of saying young man, they say Mothman stuck in my head for a while, so an accurate representation of my brain 24 seven. There's a lot more different things that are in their store, fandom related. Um, I believe there is a gorillas print in there. I'm trying to think of other fandoms that they do. There's um, Batman, Superman, stuff like that. My friend's obsessed with uh, comics. Yeah, I was just like really excited. I wanted to record it on camera. One, because I was excited and I wanted to share my excitement with the camera. Two, because they're my friends and free marketing. Okay. Here is a thought process here. I have, I'm on my old camera because I don't want to have to use my phone every single time that I want to record, it's annoying. But my old camera, like it had audio hissing issues. And so what I'm trying right now is I've put the microphone for the camera away from the camera to see if maybe that's it. Um, I can also, this is going to sound terrible. 
I can also move the microphone a little bit closer, see if that helps. It's like right here, just out of frame. Yeah, that's about as close as I can get it. Just testing to see audio quality stuff. Don't know that I'm going to be including this in the vlog, I don't know why I would, but um just testing it out, seeing how it goes. The microphone is on, uh, so yeah, see how it works. The record button is so far away. It's been a while since I last updated this vlog, somewhat just because I didn't want to record uh, somewhat because, I don't know, I guess I just wasn't in the mood for it. But I wanted to talk about some of the books that I have finished since not talking to the camera for a while. And I just realized that I left one of them over there, so hold on, let me go get it. Also, I got new glasses. Do you like them? Okay, so one of the books that I finished while I was gone was An Artificial Night by Shauna McGuire, I believe. I said a little bit about this before I left. I might not have. I don't know. This book, first of all, like the cover of it is really weird, and I have Late Eclipses right next to me, which is the next book in the series, so I'll like compare them. She just looks a little yacht. Oh. She looks like a yacht. She looks a lot younger in this one than she does in this cover. Um, but reading it, it kind of makes sense. She gets turned into a nine year old in this book for half of the book, so it kind of makes sense. Basically, a bunch of children are being kidnapped by this guy called Blind Michael and uh, she has to go and save them. The only way that she can get into Blind Michael's lands is to turn herself into a child. It's kind of creepy because it's based off of like children logic and children nightmares. And I don't know if I'm just like still a child in an adult's body or something, but it was a lot more horror than normal for this series. And it was just like, it had, um, like kids being turned into horses against their will and I just really don't like that. Not my favorite, I think probably my least favorite of the whole series so far. Didn't like it, but it was still like, I like the characters and I like to see what Toby's up to in this book. I also finished, go over here so you can see the cover when I talk about it. Um. The King's Men, the third book in the Foxhole, the Foxhole Court series, the All for the Game series by Nora Sakovic. It was a continuation, you know? It's really hard when I read books one right after the other and then I have to like say what happens in each book because they all just sort of blend together, especially in series like this. The ending was really surprising. Like I kind of knew what was going to happen, but still actually listening to what was going to happen was like, oh, we're really doing this. It was a lot more spicier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. I'm trying to think of other random thoughts that I can say about it. I did my, um, wrap up already for this. So I'm like, I've already talked about these things, but I haven't talked about it in this video. I started listening to the audiobook for The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly, um, solely because like I have this physical version of the book, but it's never been opened before, and I don't know if they just didn't do a good job when they were making this book or what, but it's really difficult to open. Like it's bound so tightly. I'll just pick a random page and show you. I get resistance this far. Like, 
I can barely open it to read it. I don't always say that you should like crack the spines of your books, but this is a book that I really feel like basically has to be cracked in order to read it. And this is my friend's book, so I don't want to crack her spine. So I just like, you know, got the audiobook through my library. And I listened to 10 minutes of it and then went, hmm, nope, not for me. Um, the opening of this book, well, I do understand because I looked up reviews and I sort of know the plot to this book. It was still, um, hmm, no thank you. The main character's mother is dying and he sort of develops like OCD because of it. Um, he has this idea that if he does certain things a certain way, it will save her. One of the ways that I really think it's like OCD is, for example, he really likes even numbers, but specifically not the number six because it's just double of three, and three is a bad number. Um, so if he, say, hits his head against the wall, he has to hit it until it's like an even number. And so if he hits his head, let's say four times, he better not hit his head again because he's not gonna be able to stop hitting his head until he gets to the number eight. Because five's an odd number, six is a bad number, seven is an odd number, and then finally eight is an even number. Anyway, the mother eventually dies. He blames himself and that sort of is what starts the plot. There are other things that are happening too. Basically, he, um, he and his mother really bonded by reading books. And so he starts reading a lot of books to try to be close to his mother again after her death and like escape what has been happening in his life recently. At one point, he, like, I guess it's a really slow, I haven't gotten to this point yet, I literally just read, or I guess listened to, like, she died, and I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, he, like, slowly gets dragged into a fantasy realm, and is being, like, this guy named the crooked man but also simultaneously in reviews i've read that he's rumpelstiltskin and i don't think the crooked man and rumpelstiltskin are the same character in most fairy tales so it's really weird for me to like be reading these reviews where it's like the crooked man also known as rumpelstiltskin and i'm like i played rumpelstiltskin in a play once in middle school. I don't know too much about the Crooked Man as like a fairy tale, um, but I don't think those two are related like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, the Crooked Man is um, like harassing him, trying to get him to stay inside this fantasy world and I think that's all of the plot. Like I said, I didn't get too far into this uh, 10 minutes of the audiobook, and then I was like, I'm done. I can't do this. I don't want to um, think of this book. It's apparently like dark all the way through, not just like the kid's mother dying, but also the whole book is dark. It's about the loss of childhood innocence and um, how this, I think he's 10. 10 year old boy very quickly becomes an adult um so yeah i don't know just not what i wanted to read currently i am reading late eclipses the fourth book in the october day series i almost called it the shauna mcguire series which is true this is a shauna mcguire series but um Shonda McGuire is not the main character. <laughs> Weird. In this one, Lily, 
who is one of Toby's friends. I haven't like really said anything about her in other things, so I was like, should I say her name? But yes, let's say it. Lily is really sick, which is weird because she's a pureblood and purebloods don't get sick. Luna also gets sick after Lily gets sick. And so Toby thinks that somebody is poisoning uh, her friends, specifically, she thinks that Oleander is poisoning her friends, um, which Oleander was one of the people in the prologue of the first book, alongside Simon, who turned Toby into a fish for 14 years. So she's kind of obviously a bad person. Um, Toby thinks that Oleander is behind this. And so she's like trying to find out who is supposedly poisoning her friends simultaneously. What is her nickname? Razel? Razelin? You know. The, um, Sylvester's daughter is, um, saying that Toby is the one who made her mother and Lily get sick. Actually, I don't think she knows about Lily. So it's just Toby is the one who made her mother get sick because Toby was the one who found her mother and like she doesn't like Toby anyway, so. Uh, she's blaming Toby, so it's basically either Toby needs to find who is poisoning these people or Toby's gonna go to jail or probably die. I'm about halfway through this book, so I know a bit more than what I just said, but um, we're back to our normal murder mystery, and at least I don't have to read about children's nightmares anymore, which is good. Alongside of that, I am listening to the audiobook Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This is an audiobook about a girl whose mother is a big businesswoman. Um, in their past, they had opened a small mom and pop restaurant called Big League Burger, and they have franchised it, and now they're having like stores all over the country. They're thinking about going worldwide, and her mother is like working really hard on this. She doesn't see her mother often, even though they live in the same house. And her mother's kind of really hard on her, um, because her mother focuses more on the business than she does her daughter. Her daughter's really good at, like, the social media side of things, and even though she doesn't want to run the Twitter, uh, she's sort of, like, in the background running the Twitter. Officially, she's not running the Twitter, but she's, like, doing everything anyway, so she might as well be. The... Business opens up a new line of grilled cheese sandwiches, one of which has the same name and the same ingredients as a smaller sandwich shop deli um, that is in the town that they currently live in, but not the town that they uh, opened their restaurant in. Since I'm listening to this on audiobook, I can't quite figure out what the name of the deli is called. I want to say, like, part of me every single time that I hear it thinks it's grilled cheese deli, but I think it's like G cheese deli or something. I don't know. Um, they're a deli. They have a lot of sandwiches and one of their most popular sandwiches is grandma's favorite, I think it's called, or something, and, um, Big League Burgers new grilled cheese is called grandma's favorite and has the same, uh, cheeses and ingredients as this grilled cheese. Um, so the deli is run by a man, a wife, and their two sons, who are twins, when the twins find out that this burger place has stolen their grilled cheese recipe from their grandma, they sort of like attack 
the burger place on Twitter and say, you know, like, hey, that's really suspicious that your new grilled cheese has the same name as our grilled cheese and the same ingredients. And since the daughter, big league daughter, um, is running the Twitter, she sort of fires back and they get into a Twitter war talking about it. Um, it gets like really popular, really famous um, through like celebrities retweeting it and people picking sides and stuff like that. <sighs> Unbeknownst to the two of them, they are classmates, um, but not only that, they are friends on an anonymous chatting app that the people in the school use, but it's not like a school sanctioned chatting app, that one of the twin sons developed. So it's kind of messy. The beginning of Tweet Cute is a little boring. I'm just not immediately pulled into the plot and the characters. But it's like kind of getting there, you know? I don't hate it, but I guess I had higher expectations for it than I should have. Yeah, I'm about two hours into that. I think there are 10 or 11 hours total. Every single time that I record without putting my phone on my tripod, like editing me looks at the footage and goes, I hate when you do this. Just take a couple of steps and put your phone on the damn tripod so the video isn't shaky because you know you're going to be using your hands while you talk eventually. But I'm stupid and lazy. It is like 11 o'clock. I've been tired for the past hour, like trying to keep myself awake. I was like about to read One Salt Sea by Shauna McGuire, the fifth book in the October Day series. Now I read a couple pages and then I was like, eh, I'm tired. So I've just been watching YouTube, um, but I've only been watching for like an hour and now I'm like, ugh, I'm tired. Um, so I don't know what I want to do tonight, but I was like, hey, uh, I'll do a little clip for the vlog. I'm halfway through Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. It's okay. I'm kind of not into it, but simultaneously I keep listening to it because I think it's funny. Like, it being funny is really saving it. The plot, I think I've explained it before. Hey, by the way, it's girl cheesing. The, the, um, restaurant name? Girl cheesing. I thought it was like G cheese or something. I don't know. That's my thumb. Can you imagine being such a terrible content creator that you glance back at your screen and you see your thumb God. Yeah, listening to that, it's... I just really don't like the war, the the Twitter war <laughs> that they're doing, and how um, Pepper's mother is forcing her into doing this, and them being nasty to each other, and then them, like, not knowing that they're talking to each other on Weasel, and ugh. I don't think I've ever explained Weasel. They have an app um, at their school that Jack created, um, the main male character, that you can talk to people anonymously. And they've been talking for a while. They're like BFFs on Weasel. Um, and they kind of hate each other in real life, but it's a flirtatious banter sort of hate. Jack's in deep. Peppers into another dude. I really like that their ship name is Pepper Jack. And that this is, you know, 
a book centered around grilled cheese. <laughs> Makes me laugh. The plot's just not that great. I don't really care for it, but I really like how humorous it is. Um, occasionally it will get, it will say something that I'm like, oh, that's funny. Um, and then I have to sit through another, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour of kind of bored. One Salt Sea, I literally am in like chapter two, so I can't say much about that. And even then it's the uh, fifth book in the series. So I don't want to say anything that spoilers, you know? I, there goes again with my thumb. Should I switch to a different hand perhaps? I did something that may be stupid today. I'm unsure. Um, I bought a new camera because I'm tired of having to use my phone to record these videos and then like not being able to look something up while I'm recording or um, like receiving text messages and then me turning my head so I can read them while I'm recording. It's really been annoying me. So I bought a new camera. It comes in two days. I'm kind of nervous because it's like, cameras are so expensive. Um, th that's like hundreds of dollars. Sometimes people even pay like thousands of dollars for cameras, but I'm not that kind of person yet. We'll see in the future. This was on like the cheaper side of cameras. It was $500. Normally I see like $800 cameras that I really like and want to buy. So, that was kind of like a contributing factor in me buying this camera, plus I saw some people's reviews and um, the footage of them, you know, using the camera and really like in-depth reviews of this camera and I was like, oh, this camera is so pretty and such high quality for such a low price, um, like it's really worth it, but also it's a $500 camera. I just spent $500 today, but it looks so pretty. The, the like resolution, it's a 4K camera and it sounds like it has really good audio quality. I'll have to play with it to see. It comes with its own wireless microphone. I don't know, I'm excited to like try it and see it and I'm really hopeful that it will work out and this will be like my new camera. But simultaneously, I'm like, uh, I spent $500. By the way, I'm still here. Um, I am thinking of going to weekly vlogs. So doing like Sunday through Saturday or something like that. And so I will be, this, this vlog is probably going to be really long. But I'll be ending this vlog tomorrow because it's currently Friday. And then Sunday, I will pick up on a new vlog and start doing that instead. I don't know. I was thinking about it earlier and I was like, man, it's really difficult to tell when 30, 30 seconds has happened, when 30 minutes has happened in a whole bunch of clips without like editing it beforehand so you know how long you still have left in the video. Listen, I'm just not that kind of person. And then I was like, technically speaking, most people do weekly vlogs and whatever content that they have for the week. There you go. Um, so I'm thinking of going back to that, to weekly vlogs, like I used to a long, long time ago, <laughs> last year. This is a testing video where we do testing things. Um, I have the wide angle lens on. I can't really tell the difference, but it's on. I have it tracking my face, um, so no matter, like, how I turn it, it automatically, like, stays with me. Stupid. Yeah, I haven't connected the microphone to it yet, but that's something I'll try, and... I think if I press this, I don't know how loud that is, and then I like use the little control stick. So it's pretty okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna 
see how this video turns out. See how good the, the audio quality is without this. Um, I don't even know, like, how much battery this thing has, you know? So, yeah. Okay, so this is a test with the 4K resolution, just in case you thought we needed that, and the microphone on. It's down here. Um, it's kind of ugly, but I don't really think it's going to be that noticeable, and hopefully it makes the audio quality a little better. I don't know. In the tests and reviews that I saw of it, it wasn't that bad anyway. So yeah, just a little test. 4K. Where did I go? Hello? <laughs> Hi. Don't want to look at me. Okay, well. Um, we'll have some things to talk about. Figure out. Hi. <laughs> It is press twice to recenter. Double tap on your face for it to look at you all nice and pretty. I don't think 4K likes tracking my face as much. Anyway. Sometimes recording means putting your camera into somewhat dangerous situations and hoping it doesn't fall. Um, I know you can see down here like the little pillow, but honestly, we're not going to get better than this angle. And I know my tripod is like five steps away, but we're just not doing that. Also, every single time that I move on my bed, the camera also moves because it's in a really precarious situation here, um, but we're gonna ignore that. I said that I was going to update Saturday and then move to my new camera, which I'll probably put the clips for that in this video, um, of me, like, trying it out and trying all the modes and stuff. It's Monday. It's Monday night. I don't know, just got, like, a little lazy. Um, didn't feel like recording, and so now I'm recording we should talk about one salt seat because I finished it and I'm pretty sure I had like just started it the last time that we talked. So this is a book about um, the Lou Shack, which I believe is how you pronounce it. It's like L-U-I-D-A-E-G, but in the pronunciation guide at the beginning of all the books, it's pronounced Lou Shack. So that's what we're going with. The Lou Shack asks, Toby, hey, can you stop this war that's about to happen between the land and the sea? And Toby's like, I guess. I mean, you do a lot of stuff for me, so I should do some stuff for you. Um, basically, the queen of the sea lands um, has two sons that got kidnapped, and so Toby has to find her two sons. I thought it was really interesting because it adds a lot more lore to the world, but also to like the different fey races. We get to talk about more uh, sea dwelling fey, and um, near the end is like a conversation about the what happened between the Roan, I think is how it's pronounced and the Selkies, which I don't know if that's like a common knowledge thing or if that's something that was just introduced in this book. Um, I'm not too familiar with like fey, different fey races and stuff. So, um, I thought that story was really interesting. Um, I thought seeing into the sea kingdom was really interesting. The plot and like the whole, oh no, who kidnapped the kids, um, wasn't that surprising. The, um, like where the kids are located, 
was just like it might as well be it's not something that we can guess as readers um because we have not only do we have like san francisco now but we also have the sea kingdom um so it's like our area of where the kids can be has expanded and we as readers just like can't guess that by ourselves but i really did like the lore and the background stories of this and where it went in expanding this sort of universe um i cried like three times it's just like i cried a little bit i stopped myself from crying because i was like we're not doing this read a couple of pages cried again stopped myself went we're not doing this um and then a couple later pages later um started crying again and stopped myself and went we're not doing this so they're kind of related but simultaneously um i'm counting them as three different cry sec sessions because they were two three different things um that happens in the back of this book i guess my ratings are based on how often i cry and how much i cry because i rated this book five stars well, like i said i really liked the lore and the expansion and i know we only have 12 minutes left of this uh recording space so we gotta go fast because we're at six minutes already i started the candle and the flame there we went I started The Candle in the Flame by Nafisa Azad, got two chapters in, and then decided the writing style was just not for me. Um, there's a lot, there's like a glossary in the back of this book, and one thing that I don't like about books that have their own glossaries is that they will often give you a word without context clues and expect you to go to the back of the book in order to figure out what the uh, word means fine if it's just like one word in a page but if it's like this book where it's five words in a single paragraph it's just like too much work i don't want to have to pause my reading to have to go to the back of the book to figure out what the hell we're talking about and honestly while i was reading this i was like this seems a little pretentious that we have that much it's one thing that i don't like about bilingual books is that you can very easily just describe the thing without using the word. I kind of feel like in using a word without giving context clues for that word, um, it's being lazy and injecting culture into a book without like actually talking about the culture. So like we know it's there but we don't actually get to see it being there if that makes sense uh and this book was really just annoying me so i dnf'd it um didn't technically write it down as a dnf because i didn't get that far into it but i'm considering it a dnf i am now reading flame in the mist by renee audier this has the same sort of thing of a bilingual um words like every so often a word in japanese comes up i don't know if this one has a glossary it does in the back of the book um again i'm not going to look at it if you can't bother telling me what the word means in context clues i'm never gonna know japanese i have an easier time with because i'm a giant nerd but simultaneously i'm not allowing my easier time affect my viewpoint on this like bilingual thing um i still think it's really stupid i still think you can at least explain what you're talking about without shoving it into the back in a glossary i'm not that far into this i'm only 14 pages in basically what i'm getting from this the main character is getting off to be married to a like prince sort of character literally all i know there was a prologue about this guy's dad being uh kind of killed kind of suicided like in front of him and in front of a whole bunch of people i don't know how that plays into this story so um that's all we've got so far like i said i was supposed to finish this vlog on saturday and it is currently monday so i'm going to close out this uh vlog 
and I only have like a minute and 30 seconds to do that so I have a little bit of time but also like let's not ramble and waste a minute 30 seconds um thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed I hope to see you in other social media and I hope to see you in my next vlog where we can talk a little bit more about Flame in the Mist but also you can see my new camera a little bit more and the um quality of it I'm really excited for it but I really wanted to finish this vlog with the phone camera so yes um really excited to see you again in my next vlog and I'm gonna go before my camera decides to delete this video for being too long.